Hello and welcome, friends and enemies, to another edition of RSF Radio. I'm your host, Joe Monday, and I have a very special guest, a returning customer, Geki. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you, Joe? I am, in a way, I'm in a way, you guys are catching me on a weird day. So, Blow Up Tuesday <laughs> happened, uh, or it's a Blow Out Tuesday, I suppose, at this, ca- at this point. Uh, <laughs> no, we'll get into that here in a minute, but like... <laughs> Just like to be clear, we're t- well. We're talking about Fartgate, which hashtag Fartgate. I'm gonna push. <laughs> I'm gonna push hashtag Fartgate out there until because it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> and it's and I love it. I love it, but it just raises so many questions. <laughs> it really does. It really raises so many questions, and like none of them are good. Actually, <laughs> like it's the <laughs> it's the sad part. Uh, but we'll I'll. If anyone's like, ooh, there's, I'm going to have some salacious inside info on Fartgate, I don't. We'll talk about it bluntly, and it'll, we'll pass over it. But before we do that, <laughs> I'm going to give you some time to... Fuck, we talked a whole minute about Fartgate already. I can't, I can't get into this. <laughs> okay. There's the quota, man. you got to do it. <laughs> All right, Ganky, tell people where they can find... Like, get the, get the pitches out front. Like, let us know what you got going on right now so people can't skip it at the end of the show. Sure, sounds good. So basically, uh, I'm Geki underscore CP on every single platform, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. Uh, I host weekly tournaments for Fighting the X-Layer every Sunday around 12 p.m. PST. So it's always posted in my Discord, in the Fexel Discord, which is also the pinned tweet on my Twitter page if you want to join it. And uh, I also run other tournaments as well for Fexel every month. I try to help every mm-hmm. tournament that exists. And currently, the biggest thing I have going on is that I'm working on a complete guide to fighting EX Lair in website format. And basically, it's going to be the level of, if you ever explored ki.info.net, so Killer Instinct's version of a guide website. And uh, yeah, it's going to be extremely comprehensive. Uh, character breakdown pages, uh, the entire game system broken down into different sections uh, with gifts to help as well and like examples and all that sort of stuff. Plus, I'm going to have an event calendar, so it'll have live updates for all the upcoming tournaments, weeklies, whatever events coming up for Fexel. Uh, Damn, dude, that's sick. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Because, like, I mean, I've I've continually said that that is probably one of the best uh, tutorials that exists for any fighting game is that info website. Mm-hmm. Um, it, which, if it's anything like that, then good on you man and then having specifically like (laughs) yeah yeah but like why why change good thing in my opinion exactly yeah Uh, and like i don't know it's just it's a fun website to peruse and like just look at the different characters and what they can do uh and actually like see that represented it's a it's very good stuff like also if you want to go learn ki that already exists so go play that yeah Uh, exactly but vexel's had some it's had some work to it and uh, let us let, let me know about Fexel. What's the state of the What's the state of the game? So the biggest question, or the biggest thing I get asked in every single format, is, "Oh, does this game have rollback now?" Yes, it has rollback on every version, PS4 and Steam. It's been out since. <laughs> so basically, at the roundtable, they announced they were messing with crossplay. and they also said that they've been testing rollback and whatnot, and it's been going well. And they're also releasing uh, very soon uh, the ability to mod uh, the Steam version. So you can add costumes yourself and basically it's a Steam Workshop file, which is pretty cool. Um, But 10 minutes after the roundtable was over and everyone was disappointed with all the news and whatnot, or the lack of news, I should say, uh, Fexel just dropped rollback 10 minutes later on PS4 and PC full release. (laughs) So they were only in beta for rollback for about... A month of testing maybe right. and like they did two different versions of the beta throughout and yeah and they went from delay based net code that a ton of japanese fighting games have right and then just month of testing ish around there and they're like oh here's rollback we fixed it Here i wonder go. if they're going to pull a oh is it nrs or is it who gave that speech at uh, GDC of where they that turned? Was NRS. Okay, NRS of it was injustice, and they yes. they made it so they went from uh, delay based to rollback, and that caused like 
that was a big deal at the time. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe there'll be a, a talk at a GDC where they talk about going from from delay based to rollback. And perhaps if it's yeah, in the language of those people that they can listen to and hear and understand to get other so. <laughs> other games on on rollback netcode. Because it does well, take Andrew, a lot of no, you know what's crazy about it too is that currently right now there's another beta they released for Steam to further improve the rollback netcode. Mm. <laughs> and on top of that, they were adding a, uh, it's already working great, but they're adding a uh, match acceptance feature. So kind of like Street Fighter V, how like you get to see the connection status of the person that you're matching with. Cool. Except it also includes um, the, uh, if they're on Wi-Fi or if they're on LAN, so if they're wired or Wi-Fi, which is nice. And also it says the region that they're from. So like the first three letter abbreviation of their country. And on top of that, it says the player name. So if there's a specific player that you always get matched with that you always have a bad connection with, you can literally choose to never accept that match. I don't know why other fighting games don't do that. Yeah. It's crazy they, to think. They don't care. <laughs> it's, it's wild to me that like a match accept is just like, here's bars. What do the bars mean? I don't know what the bars mean. To this day, I couldn't tell you what the bars mean in any like any general <laughs> sense because there's no. I don't care what the connectivity is. That doesn't like this. This bars. I want ping. I want their yeah. location. I want like the time matters, not this arbitrary five G network five G uh, <laughs> of of bars that can determine how well you're connected. But like that's always made me laugh. Uh, and this is kind of tying into the news with the CPT is mm-hmm. that one of the CPT rules is that if is that you're not allowed to play on Wi-Fi. But I've always yeah. thought to myself, like how, they can't like the steps that you would have to go through to prove that are are not in the game. Like there's there's yeah, some, this, this, there would have to be steps f- removed from actual game like that you can tell. So I'm like, that's not like a really that's pretty inviable for like how are you going to I mean, you can you can do it it's not well from what i understand i thought that tournament mode the ter- the mode that was used like once or twice apparently doesn't allow wi-fi and it checks your system somehow i don't know if that's 100 okay. percent confirmed but i heard that on the rumor mill I somewhere heard, i heard that too and i mm-hmm. guess i never looked into it because i don't know why like tournament mode for whatever reason it didn't I'll be honest, I didn't do the legwork on this one, you guys. I didn't look into the <laughs> tournament mode in full depth. It's not I even think... released. There's no reason to, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's... Yeah, I suppose that's true, too. But, like, I didn't even look to, like, what they were trying to bring over because the thing that I've learned with Capcom products is that what they tell you uh, is often at odds with how it functions. Like, Oh, for sure. Yes, Street Fighter V has a rollback netcode. Is it, is it what people want in rollback netcode? Man, maybe not so much, but nope. uh, But regardless, we'll maybe talk about Punk later. But Fexel right now is in a pretty good place, and it seems like the developers are still like putting out for that game. Like that's yeah, that's really cool. Continued to s- support for it. One of the nice too is that they constantly ask us for feedback. So every time they drop a beta, they say, "Here's the new beta code." Um, we added this, 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 and please give us feedback on it. And literally you message them back and they will reply to you and actually try to discuss what's going on in the problem and fix it. Like there's no there's no wall we have to go through. There's no barrier. And like even though um, so Mihara-san is the main programmer of the game mm-hmm. and he's the one that constantly puts out the beta codes and uh, asks for feedback and then we communicate with them based on you know, any issues we have, we try to give as much uh, detail in res- our responses, like connection, um, console to what region, all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, he's super receptive. Like, he's honest, super receptive. He's not a pushover by any means. Like, he'll <laughs> he'll argue back. He'll, like, argue back with people who are super silly. Like, say, like, oh, remove the Gogi system. It's trash. And he's like, I'm going to block you now. <laughs> <like> you're trash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But he's he's also been donating massively to the like the last few tournaments we've had. We, have, we had right. Anime Evo, which broke a thousand dollar prize pool from two dollars and ninety cents at the, at the inception Damn. of the Maturino. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two, two, I got two ninety. That's like that's some fu- that's some like Canadian money fuckery. How you got to ninety? Yeah, that's that's how that happened. If anybody's like, 
Two ninety. That's some. That's some C eighty fuckery. Fuckery, man. I can't. It's insane. <laughs> and he and Miharasan donated two thousand or sorry, six hundred dollars of his own money into Damn, the prize pool twice. So because we also had the beta government tournament, which is the first monthly uh, in the series that Lord Jimmy Bones has been hosting. So he's going to be hosting another one next month, and that one reached over six hundred dollars thanks to Miharasan. So. so- I guess then my question is, how is that community? Like, as if I were a new player who saw all this stuff and was like, damn, mm-hmm. this game, it, it looks kind of funky. It looks weird that it has, it has Skullamania. Mm-hmm. Should I, like, is this, could I learn how to play Skullamania easily if, if I, if I hop on to some of the, the Fexel servers, I hop yeah. into the tournament yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. So in the, I recommend always going into the Discord because currently that is the most resources we have. I have my YouTube channel that I basically mm-hmm. did for over like the last two years of like short little primer videos of like about defense, offense, the basic stuff of the game. Um, if you played other fighting games, I would highly recommend it because it's pretty easy to pick up. And a lot yeah. of the combos are somewhat universal because a lot of characters share similar normals. Um, so once you get comfortable with the game, you'll realize, oh, this combo is basically the same thing. I'm just changing, you know, special moves and supers on supers right. on the surface. Um, Dashing into a get... medium to then carry in forward momentum into a heavy. Exactly. Into... Yeah. And then <laughs> All the that thing stuff. about the thing I find people have the most trouble is just the speed of the game because it plays. Because uh, I was watching Juicebox play a lot, and he's he's joined the community uh, over the last few weeks or so. Cool. And uh, he's he likes it a lot because it reminds him of KOF, the King of Fighters, mm. um, because the speed is very similar. So like the footsie range you'd think in like Street Fighter is around like the sweep distance generally for most characters. Right. Um, but in Fexel, since run up low is such a common threat, you usually have to play a bit further back. And it's a lot of reads, a lot of conditioning, and uh, there's no heavy mix up game in neutral. It's mostly just going back and forth, staying mobile and uh, condition your opponent well and then picking up on punishes when you can so right because it's not like knockdowns lead to insane oki that you have to guess 50 50 yeah so much i mean there there are there are are mix-ups for sure has that like there's nothing but blocking is so good and it's incredibly hard to tick throw people in this game because uh all normals basically or universally are minus on block so if you block anything that's not in a chain you can always check the gap in between. So that's why it's hard to condition people to just stay blocking. Right. So that's why you have to stagger your change manually to catch people pressing. And then if you've conditioned them properly, then you'll be rewarded by throwing them. Hmm. And then I, I can't remember if I asked this question, but I was meaning to remind me again if the frame data is on display in the game or is it outside uh, of the game? So it's outside of the game. It is in the Discord. There's a full Japanese... Uh, frame day list that has all the new characters so it has terry and sharon but there is a english version that has everything but sharon and terry okay. um but the thing is it's not really a frame data game like it really doesn't matter too much like the specific number that this is minus five or this is minus six because sure. a lot of stuff everything can be chained and generally it's just if you take your turn or not or if this is punishable or not because right. in the game uh if you crouch block you actually have more blocks done than if you stand block something. Hmm. So that actually changes the frame data enough where some things can be plus if you crouch block, but if you stand block it, it's actually punishable, hmm. for example. so Good to know. And does that also then change the range at which they end up when you stand or crouch block? Because sometimes that was the case in other games. Uh, sometimes, but it's, it's barely noticeable. It's a okay. incredibly small difference. Yeah. Okay. And most of the the combos at that range that game are it i don't know it's hard to describe when never like a punish doesn't really start with movement whereas your big combos do mm-hmm. does that make sense i don't know if i'm yeah. uh, like regardless get a feel for the game it's it's a fun game to play and apparently the the devs are still up on it and supporting the the tournament scene is there any is there any uh, little chatter We'll chatter in the Fexel tournament scene where it might be like might, you might go official. Are you thinking about that at all? What's going on? What do you mean official? Yeah, like from the top down, like get Fexel devs in there and have like a, a pro to come back 2021 with pro tour. 
Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Well, crossplay is coming. They've already hinted that they're internally testing it, and they said they would drop it basically at the end of this month. So there's an, and they're releasing the uh, the Wi-Fi and uh, acceptance uh, option uh, in two days, basically. So they've done Dang. this in the past before, but they sometimes have just dropped a great feature that we wanted without announcing it beforehand. So we might actually get crossplay in three days. We have no idea. But, <laughs> okay, that's cool but, though. But they do that. They they love trolling us like that. Just like, oh, actually, here you go. <laughs> actually, we've been working on this the whole time. Surprise. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So because like, they did that with rollback, because we thought, yeah. oh, we're gonna have you know another month or so, or maybe m- more months of beta testing for rollback, right. and then after the roundtable, they just dropped it, and it was great. That's so cool. I wouldn't be surprised if they did it for crossplay too. Um, once crossplay comes in, I, since I do run a weekly tournament, I basically do it bi-weekly in that one week I run PC, the other week I run PS4, mm. and I just alternate between it because there's two different versions, there's two different communities among the consoles. Right. But once crossplay comes, I'm going every Sunday there's a Fexel tournament, so just join it. You know? Damn. Okay. And there's cool. a lot of new players too, so there's tons of new pa- players trying to get experience, matchups, all that sort of stuff, trying to learn the game, enjoy it. Um, and a lot of people are growing really fast. It's, it's actually quite nice. And rollback has made it so anyone in the world can play. Like in our, our weekly tournaments, we have people from the EU and like Portugal and like Austria playing people in like North America and like West Coast Canada, like me. And it's amazing. <laughs> oh, really? I, yeah, I was just going to comment at on all. That. That's, that's cool. And they're improving it. Damn, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really good news. That's. Mm-hmm. That's super good. So it looks like the future of Fexel is, uh, it looks good. It looks bright. It's a bright future. (laughs) It's shining bright like (laughs) Skullomania. Yeah, of all of the things in this world, it is it is a a shining north star where the devs listen to the community and interact with the community in a positive way. It's crazy how that works out. I know. (laughs) Tournament scene supported by the man. That's that's super cool. Well, on the other side of the scale, uh, so Punk has been given a punishment for acting out mm-hmm. <laughs> in a in a CPT. So the thing that I think people miss out on this one, the thing that kind of gets me is that he was little little irate in the in the Discord, yelling at Alex Valle, who runs the tournament because uh, yep. Level Up Series kind of operates the the online circuit. Uh, so they've been running all of these online CPT events. Punk goes off uh, and is then delivered a punishment that is, in my opinion, so when I first heard this punishment, my initial thought was like, oh, so you're telling me the player who's like historically been seated inappropriately for tournaments uh, in years history, in years past, it's just going to be seated poorly for the next tournament. Like <laughs> you're just going to do the thing that you always do, but like, okay, you just didn't lose. They put them in losers, which like fucks up. Like it happens. Like some the like punk, tournament. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Like punk could possibly lose round one of a tournament. It's extremely yeah. unlikely, but mm-hmm. it could happen. But like that really messes up that like intentionally. It's like they have a stick and they're riding a bicycle and that stick is putting punk into losers and they're just like, you know what? Let's see what happens and just stick it right into their front spokes. And they're just like, this is, yeah. this is a, surely a solution to, to get me to, they're like, we got to stop this bike. Aha. <laughs> Junk. And then, just, but then they realize, Oh, it's a triathlon and he can just get up and catch up. You know, like yeah. <laughs> it's not that short of a race, you know, <laughs> it, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It, the thing that will suck about running from loser's side is that it just it's gonna take a long that's a long day. It's yeah, a long day sure. of going all the way through loser's bracket to to finish it out. That's the way that the tournaments are run, it is slow goings. Uh but I think that well, has no, something I was, I was in that tournament too and like I was in the Discord for top sixteen because I just I just made it to mm-hmm. qualify in top sixteen. Uh fortunately I was the only Canadian as well so it's kind of funny to see like america everywhere and then just the one canadian flag for for my tag but uh i saw the him like yelling at alex by in the top 16 discord as it was going on i was like this can't be this can't be professional no oh, okay <laughs> so it's like he's gonna get banned or like punished in some way like it's, it's okay it was too much 
That's fair. Yeah. At the same time, though, I can't. I don't know. I've. Hmm. I feel like I've yelled into this microphone enough to be like, this is how you could somewhat solve that issue of having bad connectivity in tournaments. Mm-hmm. There's ways that you can manage it and mitigate it, even with bad connectivity, even with like, even with stage selection, they could like, the people who run it could download a mod that changes training room to any random stage. That mod exists. They could just do oh, that. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that, that mod just exists. So like players could play on training, like, they could select a training stage and play on it and then be viewed. So if like the argument is, oh, we don't want it to be boring uh, on then show like training stage after training stage, like they could, yeah. they could just install that mod and like be on, be it on the DL, like, Hey, pick training stage for connectivity. Cause everybody still knows that that is still an issue. Um, wow. Why yeah, I know, man. That? Jesus Christ. Like that's, <laughs> I mean, that's almost common sense. Almost, except it's like a mod, so maybe yeah. they're like we we shouldn't do that, or it's like maybe somewhere up top they're like the squares on the training stage are cheating. I could see that maybe being an argument, like from top down. But well, to be honest, I think that argument is only valid for when the player, when one of the players, don't know how to use the grid. So, like, if it's a better player, it gives the better player an advantage because they are more comfortable using, like, the lines on the grid and whatnot. But if a newer play- most newer players have no idea how to use the space because they don't look at that in training mode. They just look at, oh, am I hitting this combo? Am I not? You know, like, how far does this hit? And they're not paying attention to, like, the actual lines. You know? I mean, e- even so, like, mm-hmm. even when I use the grid, it's, like, it's not, like, a... I mean, maybe it's something that I've compartmentalized in like that side of my brain of this is how far away they are. This is how far my light punch SPD is like everyone's still moving at the same time. So it's like the ranges all change frame to frame. So for me, that's like they could give you a good judgment, but at the same time, I'm not really looking at the boxes. I'm looking at like. I mean, or like maybe I maybe I am looking at the box. I don't know. It's like, do I even almost? Yeah. Do my eyes perceive like what my mind already knows or some shit like that? Mm. That sounded like some high shit all of a sudden. <laughs> does, <laughs> been on after. <laughs> does, hey, does my mind perceive? Listen, I was hanging out with some some oldsters that were smoking doobies uh, over the past weekend. These the oldsters, <laughs> like unironically, called them doobies, and I know that that was unironic because the last time that they had smoked was when it was okay to say the word doobie. So now I'm just gonna say doobie all the time because I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the bro. Way to say it. Maybe my eyes couldn't see what my mind already knows, Gecky. <laughs> What's like a bong? Is that a bong sound? I don't know. That's pretty close, yeah. That's There's pretty close, actually. need to be more bubbling in that. Uh, but regardless, folks, uh, Punk was punished. Uh, that's about it. The online situation for the CPT is still uh, pretty garbo. Um, it, that's that's about all I can say about that. Uh, I do want to I do want to give one like huge congratulations though to Saint Cola for uh, he's lined up for commentary for the next one, so I'm like super stoked for him. Yeah, uh, he's a good dude uh, and a great commentator, and I'm super happy for him. So congratulations there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's super friendly, super approachable, mm-hmm. uh, and very entertaining on the mic. He yells like at the right right moments and i think that's hard for a comment to you yeah it, it's hard to find that like that appropriate energy let's say for the situation and he always it's earnest and earned with him i believe mm-hmm. um, but in other tournament news um i do want to i know i kind of made light of the situation earlier but i do want to like somberly like seriously apologize to fgc jesus and d answer for running the fart sound over the end of their match that was inconsiderate of me and you're two great players and you deserve the best uh kind of coverage for your match uh that showcases your play because that's the the ideal goal of the tournaments is to showcase off 
showcase the players. I didn't do that, and that one's on me, and I have failed in that mission, and I apologize. With that said, and here's the turn, is that... <laughs> I was going to say, here it comes. <laughs> is that... I mean, one, for also, again, first and foremost, like, that was a valid criticism. I will change from it, and I also want to thank you for raising that criticism because that forces me to improve and get better. Uh, and I thank you for it. Anyone who calls that the kind of behavior weak can fuck off because it actually takes, like, a lot more, like, mental strength and capacity to bring up a problem to a organization, whether that's our Street Fighter or Capcom or whatever. Yeah, uh, to sure. bring up a grievance like that uh, and get because like I mean there's a lot of kick he got like a little bit of kickback from that and people were like attacking him and I'm like no like don't do that that's mm -hmm. he did a good thing like fuck off yeah, with that sure. yeah call it but at, but at the same time these farts got heard around the world <laughs> this was <laughs> which it is. I know I'm standing too close to the fart right now to like, maybe I'm still in the haze. I'm still in the smoke. Over the button right now. <laughs> yeah. I haven't escaped the cloud that I have laid in my own office here. I'm <laughs> breathing deep my own brand. If you, if you know what I'm <laughs> oh, saying. No. And that, cause here's, here's the thing that gets me. The people were like, Oh, like Kotaku wrote an article on it. And I'm like, no, this is actually great. Cause think about this. And like there was a little bit of hate for that. I'm like, you know what? A lot of great things did happen this week that in the FGC that should be covered. Like for example, uh, there was I mean Queens of Quarantine wasn't really covered. There was the other all women's tournament run by Saki Sakura. EXO Academy is coming back. Uh, Danny Fan raised a whole bunch of money for Mario and Luigi. Uh, mm -hmm. There was that issue with the Brazilian player. Uh, that had like arm surgery that like there's a lot of things that are going on and good things to talk about. But in that pitch meeting, in that Tuesday morning pitch meeting, someone had to go up to their boss and say, Hey, farts. Can I write about farts today? And their boss said, yes. So like, it's not just that it's one person with like a blog that makes, it's like a journal entry, right? That's not what the article is. It is like an edited, it has like, block. it's it, it's an article that's posted by like, like a news source that uses like resources for that. Someone <laughs> talked their boss into being like, have you heard about these farts? And the boss was like, print it. And to me, that's just like, that is, that is beautiful. That is a beautiful thing that has happened. And I am just... Someone got paid. I mean, Ian got paid, and like that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Ian, I think is this might be a people might not like this statement, but I feel like he's an important part of the community uh, for for what it's worth. But that dude got to pitch to his boss. <laughs> he's gonna write about farts, and he got the okay for it, which is just the business surrounding it is what <clears throat> is what's funny to me. That's. That's kind of all I'll say on the statement. On the topic. I don't know. I don't know what's worse though that he said print it, or he said no. Tell me more. I haven't heard about this fart. <laughs> <laughs> or I have a conspiracy theory about it. I think that he mentioned everything else, and then didn't include the fart till the last minute. So oh, they so, didn't have enough yeah. time to redo another story because they're like, oh crap, there's a fart in it. Oh man, we fucked up. Well, oh, to be clear, print it too late. <laughs> It's a lot of farts. It wasn't just one fart. It was a lot of farts, to be clear, which is the disrespect. But I can imagine that pitch being like, tournament organizer disrespects player during play. Yeah. And like that being the lead. But then at the very end, oh yeah, it was about these, how about this, catch this, catch this gas. <laughs> oh man, is it, I don't know. There's, again, I want to be, totally serious and honest about this like the complaint is valid and true and good and mm -hmm. i have i have reached out personally to jesus and the answer and it, it explained to them uh my stance and my apology and it like the situation had been hashed out 
before the article was even posted, but and then I got picked. Like I even saw an article in some Russian news. Someone from from the Russian the Russian FGC shared a shared a little bit. It was in a, up in a blurb, and I was just like, you know what? This is we made it. We did it, you guys. I mean, maybe it got more traction because there was a guy named Jesus. So people were like, oh my god, Ooh. Jesus is getting disrespected. That's that's too that much. Is- that is true. I'm thinking about we're doing a work actually with with Jesus in the Royal Rumble, so maybe look forward to that. Which I suppose I should announce. So we're doing a Royal Rumble. <laughs> so anyone, <laughs> anyone who has won the RSO, if you are listening, you have won an East Coast or round robin. You are in the East Coast, or a three v three, and you are in the East Coast. If you have won a R Street Fighter tournament, you are cordially invited to the R Street Fire Fighter Royal Rumble. It will take place on Monday, September the 14th. Not So not the 7th, because that's Labor Day. Who knows what's going to happen on Labor Day. So the last time to really qualify might be the 31st, or it might be the week following, depending on what we do about Labor Day. So if you want to qualify for the Royal Rumble, win next week's <laughs> East Coast or Round Robin Tournament, or the following week, who can say? Uh, and then on the 14th, Royal Rumble. I will also need your entry music uh, for when we play you on. It's I'm so good. I you mean, know, hopefully. I don't know if, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it, and it should be, it should be cool. It's can I tell a- you like, a little bit of my idea for like what I imagine this to be? And you can take it or throw it in the trash, whatever, but I just want to give this to you. Yeah, sure, you know, sure. Wrestling games, and like I love the whole aspect of you know, giant big of ticket events and stuff like that. So I imagine for Street Fighter to do it justice with Royal Rumble, it has to be single elimination, first to one, and it has to be like two people start and then you just keep putting in a person in and whoever exactly. wins just keep rotating them out and then when they lose and just yeah, making it hy- as hype as possible. Exactly. That's yeah. that's basically exactly how we're gonna do it. I'm oh, I'm wavering on on whether it should be first to one or first to two. Mm-hmm. I feel like that depends on the number of people who turn up for the Royal Rumble. I feel mm-hmm. I don't know. It feels a little. It feels more dangerous if it's first to one. That it, you know what you could do. You could, really could be, be first to one and then change the amount of rounds. Oh, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Making it, but uh, three, well, five rounds. You make it like a one. life bar in like a wrestling game, you know? Yeah, that could be. That might be good. That might be the right answer. I'm not entirely sure, but it might be. Mm-hmm. No credit um, needed, Joe. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. You'll, you'll be listed in the production notes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he suggested <laughs> fourteen level font comics. More in. rounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's in the it's in the show notes. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I am excited for the Royal Rumble and excited for uh then later that week, Queens of Quarantine will be actually earlier in the week. It's the Friday. It's next fr- dates, man, how do they work? I'm bad at dates. The f- the fifth. What's the calendar? <laughs> Saturday, the fifth of September, which is how a normal human being says a date for sure. <laughs> not what an alien would say. <laughs> no, definitely not how an alien would say a date. Uh, but yeah, that's the next Queens of Quarantine, which is the all women tournament. Uh, this time for the West Coast. I'm looking forward to that. We got Flexus coming back again. Um, so, and, and I believe that I'll need to check on something, but. It'll be a good tournament, so yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, does is there anything else you wanted to cover before we kind of draw uh, shades on this one? I think I really want to emphasize that people, when they see a Macharino for any yeah. event, that you immediately stop what you're doing, take 15 seconds out of your goddamn life, click on the freaking free code and just do it if you don't play the game that's not relevant if you don't care about the game that's not relevant if you care about supporting fgc and fgc events just do it, it takes yep. 15 seconds 
and it's, it's the easiest way to donate especially in this time of covid and being in yeah. a pandemic people need money more than ever so the easiest thing you can do is take 15 seconds out of your day to help some event it's free money like they've matrino has been such a good friend to the fgc mm -hmm. uh, the amount of offer codes that they've given i mean just us alone and has been phenomenal like that kind of community outreach is fantastic and they do it with a whole bunch of other like fighting game like sects like they're like they're they're out there and like there's no reason that all of those codes shouldn't be all used up every single time my opinion mm -hmm. uh but uh that kind of you know i did forget to bring something up now that you mention it yeah uh, but when when this is over we were kind of talking about before we hit the record button that, like there will be a time where i go back to work <laughs> where <laughs> it's it's safe to go outside it's safe to to be around others uh what do you think the landscape of mm -hmm. the fgc will be now that a lot of people have transitioned to running online tournaments with the the ease of access to online tournaments mm -hmm. the already shaky position of of bars or common spaces uh maybe not common spaces because like colleges have that so like mm -hmm. there's a lot of fgcs that run out of like open college spaces so yeah. maybe that doesn't apply however uh the ease of access though everyone is getting used to these online tournaments mm -hmm. do you think the landscape will change whenever it's it's okay to go outside again i think it's definitely going to change i feel like this pandemic has changed the world drastically and even if um even when we get over it at some point or get back to some sort of new normal i feel like I don't know, places are probably going to have mandatory masks, even just out of concern for like safety or future pandemics. Um, I don't I think I think it's going to push companies to focus more on their net code. I mean, Ed Boon, uh, creator, like head studio or leader of uh, NRS, he uh, he put out a tweet saying that he wants to also improve the net code of the older NRS titles. Yeah. So like yeah. MK9, Injustice 1, and those are running on an old delay based model. So I mean, if they're wanting to improve older games as well, I think maybe it'll push other American devs to do so. And then once, you know, 20 years later, when Japan finally gets the hint, they might update theirs too. So I don't know. I think it's just necessary for companies to push for better um, service to players and better netcode infrastructure and just better features to get them enjoying their games. Because if they don't do that, I think they're going to lose a lot of players. At the same time... Mm -hmm there's almost two minds to this which i think that there is a here's my centrist opinion on this <laughs> this is like the only case where I'll, where I'll ride the middle of the fence where best of both worlds right uh is that the the local provides an experience with fighting games that cannot be matched by an online setting 100% i don't think that the level of of play and the level of advancement that one might receive by attending local is the same as like that level of skill is just not the same as what you can learn through either ranked or online tournaments. I don't think it's, I don't think it's there. Yeah. Uh, granted that is that, that is kind of a gut feeling based on observation and not like, not really data. I don't really have a whole lot of data to back that up. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. like all because all of the top players regularly attend all the major tournaments. Yeah. So, is that what lends to their greatness, or are they they continuing to go out? Like, it. I get a mm -hmm. little bit like I just want to like bring that up just to be like, hey, take all of this with a grain of salt. For but, sure. But, so like that's the value of the local. But at the same time, the value of like convenience and time for these players is like, I feel like even places that run locals, like actual be here locals, mm -hmm. 
I don't think that they'll be able to operate if they don't also in the future, if they don't also continue to reincorporate the online aspect of their community. hundred percent. I think, I think having only, yeah, I think, I think I totally agree with you on that. Cause if you just have offline events and you're a local scene or community, you have to incorporate the online because some people just can't make it as consistently offline because maybe of distance or, you know, ways of transportation and whatnot, or, you know, maybe they're just not a social person and it's much low, it's much lower commitment socially to enter an online tournament. You don't even have to really talk all the time. You can just say like, Oh, I'm here Mm -hmm. when the score that you check into, right. To like report for your matches and whatnot. Um, I think, I think the people like the top players in a, in a game or people that are like close to that level, generally won't really lose too much in terms of building up their skills because I think they already know what they need to do to improve. And as long as they have fellow people they can play with on a consistent basis that challenges them enough, then they can grow as a player. Mm -hmm. Um, I think locals are more beneficial to newer people and people that are super interested in like multitude of fighting games because you can try a lot of fighting games very fast in one night at a local scene versus like having to actually buy the game yeah uh, you know yourself on your own console or pc or whatever and then you have to go through a refund process if you don't like it plus within a local scene i've learned more fighting games because the people that play the games are also there playing the games that i want to try and i can literally just turn around and ask them like hey can you just help me for five minutes explain the game to me or whatever it is so i think it's a great outlet for getting people into multiple games i mean i've I've bullied tons of Vancouver people into playing Fexel and trying Fexel because they're literally there for Street Fighter. So <laughs> I'm like the old man with the jacket, like, hey, you want to try some Fexel? You know? <laughs> <laughs> You've opened up your Fexel jacket and it's just like, yeah. I get I some got goji. <laughs> It's very shiny. Those, those goji are very shiny in there. Damn. Uh, the, the gogi. Uh, no, that's. But like, that's always been part of it and i feel like a smart way to move forward into the future is incorporating that online aspect and saying like everything leading back to the thing that i mean people hate it when we talk about this but the thing that butters your bread the thing that keeps you like financially able to continue to do stuff because mm-hmm. like it's like owning a bar or restaurant is like paper thin margins like there's it's and especially in these times it's going to be really, really hard for those types of venues to continue to remain open. So yeah, sure. I kind of want to remind people that like, if there are, if there are bars that you or your community has like any influence over, uh, I would say maybe encourage them to do, to do takeout and support them that way. So that on the other end of this, that they'll still be around uh, yeah. and have that space for you. Uh, or if, they have any kind of merchandising. Uh, I know that uh, Quarters Bar in Utah, for example, I don't know this because like Tom runs his his local out of uh, Quarters, uh, and they do like a whole thing. They've been running like streams every week still, and they do like teaching people how to do drinks on stream and adding like new fun things to to their broadcast. Oh, cool. uh, yeah, yeah, just like just thinking of like new ways to still be around after you know after we we get through this together because like throwing a here's what you don't do is uh put together an in-person tournament right now for any reason like i it, it, that's like a very short site and i get it that like people might need money right now and like they're not liquid and there's a lot of companies and a lot of um uh, uh spaces bars restaurants that are in danger of going under but at the same time that's like a short-sighted solution to public health where like yeah sure like the long term play the recovery it's just going to make it take longer to get back to normal yeah yeah i mean and And like if that can support with takeout extremely easily and there's even apps that help you do it like DoorDash and you know skip the dishes all that sort of stuff right I mean, right like it's you can you can get a hold of the the food you love um mm-hmm. like i the restaurant that i would 
normally go to here in Pittsburgh. I've I've done takeout numerous times because I don't I don't want them to close. Uh, yeah. Their food's just super super fucking good. Which, by the way, shameless plug. This is not an ad. Uh, <laughs> Onion Maiden in Pittsburgh. It's delicious. Ooh. Go to Onion Maiden. It is a it's a vegan like death metal theme restaurant. It is. What? It's dope. That it's amazing. It's great, dude. It's man. I I like because that's one of the things I miss going into that restaurant and just hearing like the drone of like some some like some doom metal guitar, just like level of like deep dr- and being like, yeah, I'm feeling this. This is a and then like eating vegan food, which my wife is is vegan, but okay. I but their particular brand of vegan food is not the kind of like. Hey, it's like a chicken nugget. No, they're more like, here's a weird vegetable that cooked in a weird way that you've never had before. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I haven't. That's delicious. This is a whole <laughs> flavor I experience. Love I love that. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole different flavor experience that I've never had before. But regardless, uh, easy to support some stuff like that. And if your local has that opportunity, I would recommend taking advantage of that and not going to a local and getting your whole family sick because fighting games sure. actually yeah. you know what? i will go off on a slight tangent here but to further emphasize your point about the vegan stuff so like i can't stand it when people like vegan restaurants or vegetarian places try to just imitate meat like just yeah. go full ham give me a full-on garden patty make it all weird put whatever vegetables and you know concoction you want and just make it good I yeah dude I the vegan food i've had is when they don't try to imitate meat Exactly. That is a hundred percent it. And the worst vegan food you've ever had is when you go to a wedding of any kind and you say that you're vegan. Cause then the chef's like, I don't have anything here for you. The chef, the chef is always like, I have pasta and I have a marinara. <laughs> oh, That's, but the marinara has beef in it. Oh, oh yeah, it's beef stock. Sorry. So, <clears throat> so actually, never mind. You've <laughs> haha, fuck you again. Um, yeah, yeah. That's always the worst vegan food. But, but yeah, the best vegan food I can say is like stuff that doesn't try. Except, I will say there's one exception to this rule, okay. uh, and it is uh, jackfruit buffalo dip. Ooh, what? So it. So have you ever had jackfruit? Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, so it has. Have you ever like tasted it? I never actually like tasted it raw, so I don't really know what to explain about it. But it has the texture of it is like almost fibrous in a way that like a that chicken is. Okay. So when you put that in a buffalo chicken dip instead of chicken, mm. like my wife has actually fooled people of like this chicken dip's good. Chicken, so something's a little strange about this chicken, but I can't tell what. And it's like huh. people who who like regularly eat chicken. They're like, I don't really know, but really, when you go to Buffalo Chicken Dip, you're there for the buffalo. That's the yeah. That's the the flavor. The buffalo sauce is the flavor you're trying to experience. Mm. So like, it's it's overpowering of like whatever holds it. And I think the jackfruit has like the same texture as chicken would. So it like. In my opinion, that is the only one, the one and only, like, stand-in that's like, you know what, that actually, I, j- I fuck with that, I'll fuck with that. <laughs> I should try jackfruit, that sounds interesting. I'm in on the uh, the cauliflower wagon, so I've been doing a lot of, like, baking it into pieces and broiling it, but using, like, sriracha mixed with, like, goju chang sauce, so it's, like, super tangy oh, yeah. and super spicy, and then dipping it in, like, some... Uh, tzatziki and whatnot it's super good do you like a, a a cauliflower steak where you like cut it like an inch thick or so and lay it on the grill that's always good oh that's good too yeah or a, uh, cauliflower is always great oh hell yeah or like you can make a cauliflower pizza crust it's a little tougher though because you gotta like oh do it god all. i don't recommend it i didn't recommend just buying like the actual crust <laughs> first <laughs> Get some milk to make the crust, and then you do it. Because honestly, I was squeezing, squeezing it through a rag, like the cauliflower, for like an hour, and yeah. it was not worth making it yourself. You can buy it for th- like three or four dollars. Honestly, they have machines that take the moisture out, so you don't have to. Yeah. Anyway, this has been your vegan minute on the RSF. <laughs>
uh, RSF Radio. Thank you for listening to your Vegan Minute. Um, which is actually funny. The last time you were on, we talked about like eating eating food and stuff. You taught to, me about beets, and I've been uh, I've been on the beet wagon too. So you, dude, you hell yeah. it's it's funny that you say that because I had a. <laughs> I <laughs> are we coming back full circle now? Maybe I d- I, d- I do kind of want to talk about beet poops because I did have a beet poop one morning that was like we need to call a doctor. But then I was like, because I had forgotten, I had like gotten drunk the night before and forgotten that I had eaten beets, like oh. at, at, at like a lot of them. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is. I was seriously alarmed because I had totally forgotten that I'd eaten beets. And when mm. I had like brought this to the attention, she was like, "No, you had beets yesterday. Don't you're not I'm not taking you to a doctor. You're fine." And I'm like, but the the toilet says go to a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet is a color that says go to a hospital though and I'm like oh you know what I did I did eat beets yeah pickled beets man delicious that's an adventure right there anyway uh, with that though is there anything else that you want to cover before uh, signing off for, for today's podcast just play Fexel play a lot of it and don't stop asking me questions because I honestly don't care and I like answering stuff like that. So please. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to the website. Do you have a, you know what? I'm not going to ask you what the URL in mind is unless you've already got it. So I accidentally published it oh, already. Spilled beans already. You spilled beans. I'm not going to say what the URL is, but I've made it. I'm using Wix. Uh, Because it's actually free to use. This is not a plug for Wix, but it's free. And uh, the only thing, the only downside is you don't pick the URL. Uh, But I created an email myself so that I kind of make it look like it's pretty close to like what a, you know, official like email URL would be. And uh, the only downside is that there's just an ad for Wix at the top of the page. But the whole website still works normally. So it's live now. You guys can look at it now uh, in its half finished state maybe a bit more than half and uh yeah you'll find out when i officially post the earl but uh you can you can hunt it down if you want <laughs> it's <laughs> out there it's it's been it's been leaked by you yep. <laughs> at some <laughs> point in the past the stupid part <laughs> i don't know um, how to publish it so <laughs> <laughs> i'm rushing to finish it so that i don't get like caught caught in the corner with like a hot dog in my mouth, you know, like, <laughs> like <what? laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, no, that's cool. Uh, looking forward to it though. Um, but hey. before that though, uh, before you go, I know it's been a while, but I'll, I'll ask you the question. Has your favorite normal or favorite combo changed since last time? Yes, actually. Okay. Joe, I have. Favorite normal. So, let's start out. Favorite normal. Uh, I remember last time I said that it was Ken's stand heavy punch in Street Fighter Two on the SNES specifically because it causes slowdown on the console when you get hit by a heavy attack. Mm-hmm. So it slows down. And you see like the vomit or whatever particle effects were coming out of their mouth at the time. Uh, <laughs> so now my favorite normal is Hokuto in Fexel. Her forward heavy kick uh it's called guy shoe so g-a-i and then dash s-h-u mm-hmm. so it's a unique attack in the game that you can stick at the end of any chain like in like in fexel um but the difference is, is that she has a sweep that's incredibly unsafe but at low profiles and it's great for pushback but you can just immediately go into this forward heavy kick and it causes immense pushback it's not punishable and it spaces just right so that if they try to challenge with anything, you can just instantly press stand medium kick and buffer that into a super and get a sick looking whip punished. So that's Damn. my favorite uh, favorite normal. I love that. I love that because it explains a a technique and type of gameplay that I feel like is for whatever reason still widely unknown or unstudied in most fighting games or specifically mm-hmm. let's say Street Fighter 5 of yeah. the the predetermined with punish ranges of they've blocked this and I know I'm negative but they're at a certain range what can they press at this range and what can I have in store for them if they do press a button to punish them for trying to press a button here 
which is exactly what that situation is is that like yeah. that perfect like set play neutral if that makes any sense yeah yeah um, for sure or set play with punishes i suppose is more it's like you're basically just doing a instead of doing a frame trap or like a block string to yeah. like try and hit them you're trying to use a block string or a set of normals to set up a specific spacing yeah. so that if they press anything you're ready and you know it's all yeah. it's all part of the plan space trap yeah is, spa- have, is there a word space trap a word hold on i don't think it's been officially coined <laughs> has there been like a name for it i feel like space trap would be a good word for it should be yeah if not with, with trap, at least yeah with punish trap sure sure mm-hmm. with trap with I like trap. space trap though. that sounds like a movie yeah space trap is a uh, yeah on a reef space trap. that's a that's a blockbuster for sure for yeah. sure yeah. uh favorite combo though has that changed yeah so uh there was a few fexel combos because i recently started discovering even more I don't so once if you get juggled in the air you can do uh the common high level combo to do generally with most characters is you do like a jab standing jab and then you dash cancel it and you repeat that process and you vary if you're doing a crouch jab or a stand jab based on the amount of hits and it looks very very stylish and you can carry it carry them all the way to the corner but my favorite combo is actually what uh one of the best player actually he won anime evo for Fexel, and he plays literally the entire cast and he did it at the tournament but he did a combo at the weekly i hosted just before that with shadow geist and it was the sickest combo i have ever seen in any fighting game so shadow geist looks like spawn fyi so if you imagine what this looks like so shadow geist has a super that is in the air and it is a 720 motion now if the opponent is in the air next to him he will do a raging demon like grab sequence in the air it. which is love high. it already <laughs> it's but the high level thing about it is that if you do it in the air after you hit a certain air attack or some air attacks uh and they're not in the air it actually lets you fall faster so you can combo stuff on the ground that you wouldn't get to combo normally so okay. <laughs> The combo was, and we're going to fuck this up, but general, basically what this was is that he did... He, so Shadow Geist has a dive kick, which is course of a forward kick, and the angle based on the kick strength. Right. Uh, so he did a jumping attack, canceled into dive kick, canceled into a 720 air super that caught him, got him to land. He did a crouch medium kick, then jumped again into the... Air, air SPD and then did another combo and then finished it with a special. So he did two 720s immediately in a short like the combo was like less than 10 seconds. Right. But the amount of execution and in a match in tournament is just freaking ridiculous. I'll find a clip and send it to you and you can For, post it. But. No, I, I see it in my brain space but like that that seems like a awesome waste of meter yeah it's completely unoptimal but <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it, the most it, awesome it. Waste. <laughs> that seems like an incredible waste of meter i love it oh what a showman what a what a showboat that's so cool damn <laughs> yeah do definitely link it. that to me after <laughs> this because I, I definitely want to see that combo in action because that sounds sick as fuck uh all right folks uh with that though That'll be a show. That's a show. Gacky, thank you once again for joining us uh, this week and talking about what's good. Uh, remind people again where they can find you on the internet.com. So you can find me on uh, Twitter, Discord, on Twitch, on my YouTube channel at Gecky underscore CP. Um, say hello. Ask questions. I'm incredibly helpful. I think I'm a nice person. <laughs> and uh, yeah, You're play okay. Fexel. <laughs> You're all right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm Super Joe Monday. You can find me uh, on Twitter.com at Super Joe Monday or at Reddit SF or just hop on our Street Fighter and see what's happening. Uh, that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, again, look forward to the Royal Rumble coming up two weeks, three ish weeks from now. Uh, don't forget about Queens of Quarantine coming up next week. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff coming up on the, up on the horizon. So look forward to see what's good. We are, y'all know what's good. 
but check back next week for another edition of RSF Radio. But until then, take care, folks. Peace. See ya.